Hey, friends. Well, it looks like Valentine's Day is here again. Just like turning back the clock or the end of winter, Valentine's Day marks the end of something. Namely, the deeply depressing holidays that started with Christmas, where you're inundated with constant reminders that you're all alone and unloved. You get through Valentine's Day and it's smooth sailing, brother. Until the end of the year, anyway. Then it's Christmas and New Year's and Valentine's all over again. Ugh. In the short term, let's all look forward to February 15th for the half-off prices on candy. Anyway, I thought I'd review a romance movie for you in honor of this horrific Hallmark holiday. This time, we're taking a look at another Dudley Moore comedy, Lovesick from 1983. Not to be confused with Lovesick from 2014 or Lovesick from 2016, or even Lovesick, the TV series from 2014. No, the one we're interested in is definitely from 1983. Our story goes like this. Our hero, Saul Benjamin, is a psychiatrist who leads a rather routine, boring life, despite being married to a pretty cute chick. Anyway, something is missing in his life. His patients kind of bore him, but he's basically a good-natured and professional guy who cares, and he does the best he can. One night, he's at a birthday party for a colleague who takes him aside and confesses to something called countertransference. Transference is when a patient falls in love with their doctor or therapist. Countertransference is when the doctor goes gaga for the patient. And that's what's happening here. Well, thanks to a timely plot contrivance, this patient winds up being recommended to Saul for counseling because she's having panic attacks. And from the moment he sees her, he falls in love. Can't blame him. This girl is a writer and works in theater. She's sweet, well-read, intelligent, and she's cute as a button. On top of that, she finds Saul attractive. Well now, Saul has a problem. He knows he shouldn't, but he gets more and more obsessed with this chick, something he isn't supposed to do as her analyst. It goes against the grain of every professional code, but he just can't help himself. Well, we've all been there, haven't we? He gets advice from a mentor, as well as a figment of his imagination, which takes the form of Sigmund Freud. Problems seem to pile up for the poor guy. His wife is cheating on him. He's under fire from a society of psychiatrists who may not let him join their elite ranks or take away his accreditation. You name it. Can Saul have a real romance with a patient? If he confesses, will she tell him to get stuffed? Is this just transference and counter-transference, or is this true love? In our cast, we have Dudley Moore, of course. Elizabeth McGovern plays the love interest, Chloe. She was in Downton Abbey, Ordinary People, and many other things. She's, she's pretty good in this. None other than Jedi Master Alec Guinness plays Sigmund Freud, and he's actually pretty good here, too. Renee Taylor plays one of Saul's patients. She was in a lot of TV and did an occasional movie. She appeared in Dream On and was a regular on The Nanny. Christine Baranski from the TV series Sybil. Remember her? That was her breakout role. She's here playing a patient who has erotic dreams. Wallace Shawn plays the colleague who's in love with Chloe. And you'll also spot Selma Diamond from Night Court playing a colleague of Saul's. Mark Bloom, a very familiar face, he's here in a very early role, his first film credit, in fact. 
We also have Ron Silver from Time Cop. As an uptight actor, Chloe works with. David Strathairn is here in an early role, too. He was in Lincoln, L.A. Confidential. He played Edward R. Morrow in Good Night and Good Luck. Just tons of stuff over his career. He's the patient in the scene which created the trope of the tinfoil hat to prevent aliens or the government from reading your brain. Supposedly, that all started with this film. And finally, we have the legendary John Huston in his final film role as Saul's mentor. And he's really good, as you'd imagine. So, a uh, fantastic cast. So what went wrong, and why have you never heard of this one? Well, after the smash success Dudley Moore had with Arthur, he kept trying to recapture lightning in a bottle, and it just never seemed to work out for him. He wound up in a lot of middling films that were beneath his talent. Now, the Twitter kids, they're gonna hate this one. Why? Because for the first half of the movie or so, Saul develops into... kind of a creeper. I mean, he's Dudley Moore, so you know he's harmless and all, and this is meant to be a comedy, but yeah, he does get pretty obsessed over Chloe, and that makes him a little... stalkery. Aside from that, the comedy is sort of mellowed out here. It's never as funny as it wants to be or needs to be. But Dudley Moore is likable anyway, and the film has a lush score, really pretty themes. Director Marshall Brickman wrote for Woody Allen on his films, including Annie Hall, Sleeper, and Manhattan. And he wrote and directed the sci-fi classic The Manhattan Project. He does a fair job here, and in spite of everything, he manages to make a charming little romance movie set in an almost magical New York. It's not overly hilarious or a knee slapper. Dudley Moore should have gotten bigger and better things, but this film is charming in its own quiet way, and Dudley Moore has a lot to do with that. So I'm giving Lovesick two and a quarter paws up definitely worth checking out. Well, I hope your Valentine's Day is full of gifts and cards and candy and hot makeouts. <laughs> you take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.